guys, Jason from Meghead Studios, and I'm going to relaunch my RPG Talk uh, channel, so to speak, channel kind of, so to speak. Um, it's not going to be focused on D&D so much anymore, even though that's kind of the game I'm mostly playing right now. Um, this is going to be just about role-playing games in general, not Final Fantasy or any MMOs like that on the console or on the PC. I'm talking about chucking some dice, all right? Old school role-playing. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of background because what I want to talk about is new school versus the old school. I'm obviously the old school. I'm 41 years old. I've been playing RPG since about 1980, 1981. Okay? So just a little bit about me and my background on this, and then I'll get into why I want to talk about new school versus old school. So my experience with role-playing games started with Dungeons & Dragons. Of course, obviously. This was back in 80 or 81. Um... This was the original Dungeons & Dragons. My cousin had it, not AD&D, not AD&D 2nd Edition, the original D&D, okay? Now, being a young lad at that time, having just seen, I believe we just saw the uh, Hobbit animated movie. You remember that? Yeah, that, that long ago. So, we had just watched that, and I really was all up into wanting to play some type of guy who can kill dragons and fight the goblins and orcs and all that. You just happen to have it. Unfortunately, what ended up happening was during our first game session, I really couldn't understand the mechanics. The storytelling was was pretty easy. Remember, I'm a young man at that time. In the 80s, I was about 1980, uh, 77. I was, I, was, I was about five years old, okay? Um, so of course, I couldn't understand the mechanics of the game, whether it be from the way my cousin was explaining it to me because I didn't read the books and or just it was just too complicated for me at the time. Not a big deal. But again, back then, there weren't a whole lot of role playing games you can actually play. And in fact, the only one I really knew about was Dungeons and Dragons. So because of that, it put me off D&D for a long time. I just I just couldn't grasp it. Then at some point, I want to say around 85 or maybe even 1987, uh, my mom was working at a place called Lionel Playworld. Yeah, I'm that old. I'm 41. If you don't know what Lionel Playworld is, it's just like Toys R Us. Or it was. It's since gone the way of the dodo. But anyway, so she was playing there. I was browsing the aisles one day while she was at work because it was cool to bring your kid that back then. It was no big deal. And plus, it's a toy store. So come on. Um, I saw something called Top Secret SI by TSR. Saw that it was a role-playing game. Didn't understand it, but it looked cool because, again, I think at that time I had just watched a couple of James Bond flicks with my dad. So I was like, oh, cool, spy game. Got that. Um, actually read it, understood it, and started playing that. And I got a couple of local friends from the neighborhood, and we started playing Top Secret SI. Pretty good game. Didn't know nothing about expansions. Didn't have additional source material because, again, I got it at a, at a toy store. Um, didn't know anything about, you know, model shops, hobby shops or anything like that. Well, model shops, yes, but they didn't carry anything because we were big into scale modeling, my dad and I, back then. So let's fast forward a couple years more. In high school, got to Fort Hood, Texas because parents divorced and all that. Typical 80s family. Um, and I met with a friend named Eric who just happened to like Robotech. And he was like, hey, check this out. He had the Southern Cross book from Palladium Books. Now, this is where my role playing actually kicked in a lot. This is where I really got into RPGs. Um, all he had, again, was just a Southern Cross book. That was it. And I knew some way, somehow, that this couldn't be right, the way that we were playing, because we were just taking the skills out of that book and out of the uh, character classes and whatever that bonus was, we would just put the 10% and that's what we were rolled because that's all he knew was exi that existed at that time. So I want to say about a month in, I kind of got tired of it. I was like, no way, there's got to be more to this. Looked around the area, and again, one of the local model shops actually happened to have the role-playing book, the first book, the Macross Saga book. I picked that up, read it, went back to our group, which was always at Eric's house, usually Fridays and Saturdays. Um, I said, "Hey, I've got the book. This is how this is how the game is supposed to be." He got kind of pissed about it. I said, "Okay, well, if you're so smart, why don't you run the game?" 
At that point, I pretty much became the de facto game master for any RPG that we played from that point forward because I knew the mechanics. Um, and I'm not trying to sound, you no, know, not trying to toot my own horn or anything like that. But over the years, everybody has told me that has played with me, you make some fantastic games. You have some great settings. So I very rarely get to play in a game. Um, and this is, I'll go more into that in just a minute. Um, so anyway, so we started playing Robotech. Then another one of our friends who was in ROTC with us, who didn't know that we gamed, um, just happened to also game. And he said, dude, Twilight 2000, why don't you try it? Okay. He lent me the book, read it over the weekend. The next week we started our 1980s punk era Twilight 2000 game. That game lasted a long time. It actually took over the Robotech game, and for, for four years, we played nothing but Twilight 2000 throughout high school, freshman year until graduation when I left for the Marine Corps. Okay, um, at some point in between, I did get riffs, and again, because I already knew the background and the Megaversal system by Palladium Books, say what you will about it, but anyway, but because I knew their Megaversal system. I was able to get rifts off the ground, and we had occasional rifts games going on here, here and forth. During the Marine Corps, I learned um, the various Marvel RPGs by TSR, and I can't remember who else made one. Um, then there was the Decipher Star Trek game, which was a complete mess, just my opinion. And a few years later, stationed in North Carolina, one of my friends finally brought up the excuse me, Star Wars RPG, um, Star Wars, Star Wars role-playing game by Westland Games, second edition, revised and expanded, which to this day is still my number one favorite role-playing game. It absolutely is. No question is about it. Um, again, my opinion, yours may differ, but yeah, uh, I've played numerous games. Like I've said, we've done Robotech, both editions of Robotech, I should say, should clarify, just to bring everything up to date. The original Rifts, um, Top Secret SI, Vampire the Masquerade, I had a seven year long campaign with that. Love Vampire, absolutely love Vampire. Um, or wish I could get more people to play it now, especially the Dark Ages, love Vampire the Dark Ages. Um, I'll go more into some of those things later in other videos. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, After the Bomb, um, the Decipher Star Trek. Um, I played a little bit of Starfleet by Thassa. Um, the Mech Warrior RPG, the first edition of Mech Warrior, that was a pretty good game, also. Um, I've got a newer Star Trek version that just released, not the Modifius or however you pronounce it. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing it. Um, and wow, there's just a lot of games that I've played over the years. So I've got the experience, well over 20 years of playing. So that brings me to the point of this video. New school versus old school. So as some of you know, I was unemployed for a good while, for about six months, six, seven months. So I had a lot of time and I really got into the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Nothing wrong with the game, um, but it's presented in a way that I actually liked. And I was very, it was very easy for me to make my own background for this game. Complete new world. Um, my players showed up on the dot every other Saturday because they really enjoyed the game. Um, and it was expansive. It was a huge, huge world. Then I got employed again. Unfortunately, my work week is six. I work six days a week and only have a Tuesday off. Okay. Um, so, and I work in the evenings. So the gaming has stopped. Now, recently, within the last two weeks, Two of my fellow employees, you know, we're talking about anime and they said, hey, do you play Dungeons and Dragons? I'm like, yeah, of course, I run Dungeons and Dragons. They were very interested in joining a game or creating a new game. I was like, cool, great. I'll break out my books again and start everything going. Brought the book to the main person who wanted to play. He's only 22 years old. He's what I call the new school. And this is where the problem ensued. Gave him the book, and he's like, what's this? 
Well, this is the book that you're going to need in order to make your character and learn the rules. And the rules, they're just the base. I go Like most game masters or dungeon masters, you know, you do your own thing. I think I've only met two DMs in my life that are rules lawyers. That If it's not in the book, it doesn't happen. I'm not one of those people. I like to go on the fly. All right? But anyway, so he's looking at this book like I've just given him an alien embryo. He's like, oh, well, um, I don't want to read it. What are you talking about? Why don't you want to read it? I just don't like reading. Just make me a character. But I want to have this, 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 and this. I want to do this, 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 and that. I'm like, okay, so hold up. You want me to make you a character based on an anime that we had just recently talked about, and you don't want to read the book? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I want. No, that's not happening. So the other guy that also wanted to play decided, okay, let me give him the book. Same response. He's like, oh, well, uh, can't you just go on the computer and make a character? I'm like, yeah, you can. You can go to a couple places and make a character, but you're not going to understand what anything does, to be honest with you. You're not going to understand the rules. It's like, well, um, I just don't want to read it. I don't have time to read it. I've got to play a Final Fantasy raid and this and that. Okay, so needless to say, that game is a bust. It's not happening. Excuse me, one second. It's just water. It's not a big goal. But anyway, so this is the problem I'm finding with a lot of what I call the new school gamers. New school gamers, I would consider pretty much anything from 2005, maybe 2010 to the present where video games have really taken over the industry of what people conceive to be a role-playing game. Now, there's nothing wrong with console games. Personally, I don't really get into them because I th I really feel that a console role-playing game isn't a true role-playing game because there are predetermined factors already built into the game. It's programmed into the game. Now, granted, a lot of these things can have a 100 200 different outcomes for the decisions you make. Some of them are really good about it. Um, Fallout, for example, is a great you know, example of that. Um, but yeah, in a role-playing game, to me, and a lot of old-school gamers who are around my age who've been gaming for a long time, we really think that you know everything's determined by the dice and that the GM or DM, you know, for, for my purposes, I'm just going to say GM, Game Master from this point forward. Um, but the GM really has to think on the fly. Because we all know characters, players, they will do things that will upset your game in a heartbeat. They're known to do that. This needs to be expected. And then you need to accept that fact. I mean, honestly. Uh, my friend Eli from Elfbait got the link down there for his channel. Great channel. Always promoting him when it comes to RPGs and other things. Really good friend of mine. Um, he mentioned something where I don't know the links for it. If he wants to expand on that a little further than he has in a video that he already posted, um, that's his prerogative because I don't know the people involved. But the gist of it was a person came into a new game, new player, and basically threw a monkey wrench into the DM's plan. His whole plot was ruined by one action. This DM ended up kicking the man out of the game, period. So far as to writing a letter for the game shop owner in the location that they were playing to give to this guy when he showed back up, telling him that nobody wants him to play or anything like that. Um, you know, it's kind of going off in a little bit of the different tangent, but this is the thing. Old school gamers like myself, and others who have been playing for 20 plus years, we expect this kind of thing to happen. And, you know, the people that are coming into the game, fresh and new, and I want to say fresh and new is about a year in, a year into RPGs, okay? It gives you a good, good amount of experience. Yeah, you can know the book in and out. That's great. But for somebody to kick somebody out of a game because they throw a monkey wrench in there, and they basically ruin your entire plot, that's wrong, okay? My understanding is this DM is probably one of the new school gamers, doesn't know how to adapt and overcome. 
Hey, military credo right there. Anyway, so yeah, you need to know how to adapt and overcome. Like I said, players will always do something unexpected and totally change the outcome of your plot. All you have to do is think on the fly. Seriously, just think on the fly. Another thing I've learned about the new school gamers is a lot of them don't like to read the books. Now, granted, here's the problem with the current state of role playing. It is coming back. It is a very acceptable form of social um, social gatherings because, as Eli mentioned, a pickup game of D&D is a very real thing. I mean, I can literally post something today if on Craigslist, for that matter, and say, hey, pickup game, D&D, 8 p.m., meet me at you know my local comic shop. I'll probably have like five or ten people show up easily with a character ready to play. Why? Because they just want to play. But, you know, and that's the new school gamer mentality where you can, you know, do a pickup game. But a lot of people I've I've met at the local game shops haven't really read the books. They don't even own the books. They kind of glance at it or they go to some place like um, well, I'm not going to mention the website, but there is a website where you can very easily make your character very quick. Just plug in a big a few bits of information. Don't need to excel and make your character. And then they get mad because they don't understand that the rules say you need this, this, and this. How how did you get this particular um, spell if you're only a level one when this is like a level eight spell? You know, well, you know, the program let me do it. Okay, well, the program might have let you do it. You probably had to set to a homebrew, but we're playing a pickup game. So, yeah. You know, you, you, you technically can't get this, you can't have this without a good reason. So that Yeah, that's kind of the issue that's coming up. A lot of people of the new school don't want to read the books. and But again, like I was trying to say before, I'm sorry, I keep going off tangent. In today's market, there are so many role-playing game books out there that use different systems. And it can become overwhelming for the new school player to pick up this brand new RPG that sounds really great and then have to learn a whole new system when maybe last month they just picked up a different book because they wanted to play that. So now you have you know a ton of books, a ton of different systems. It can be very overwhelming. Now for us, the old school gamers, it's very different because when we were coming up, all we had was D&D and then more and more books came available but the frequency of these releases was quite staggered. It could be anywhere from anywhere from three months to a year to several years before something new actually came out. So you had time to learn these rules and learn them, memorize them by heart to the point where you didn't even need the book. And then if something else came out, it's no problem to pick up the book, start reading it, learn that system with your group of players, boom, you're done. But again, nowadays, I can literally walk into one of my local gaming shops there's like 40 different RPGs on the shelf. All of them might be very interesting to me. I'm not saying that they are. A lot of them can be very interesting. Do I want to learn 40 different rule systems? No, not to be perfectly honest, no. Um, same thing carries over with my miniature gaming. There's so many different rule sets out there that I've settled. I've literally just settled on the Warhammer 40K 8th edition rules because it fits my needs. My son enjoys the rules. It's not very overwhelming, thank goodness. Thank you, GW, for that. But anyway, you can see a very similar thing when it comes to war games and role-playing games. So many rule systems out there. Which do I choose? Which are people playing? So on and so forth. Um, one of the great things is, though, the D20 system has finally, I, in my opinion, has finally come to a, an even playing field, I guess you want to say where it's pretty easy to learn the D20 system and go from different games, um, let's say like Pathfinder and D&D. It's pretty much the same rule system. There's just a few different nuances between them. It's very easy to pick up. You can learn it within minutes of each other, literally. So, yeah, I mean, old school, new school, I don't know which is better. All I know is that right now, it's very hard for me to find players of the old school to work with my schedule in order to play a game. However, new school players, and I'm not talking about just two people. 
that I've run into. I've run into about 20 people that do want to play D&D with me, but they don't want to read the book. You know, but what can I do if they don't want to read the book? I'm sorry. I mean, you got to know the rules. I don't want to spend one or two game sessions, you know, up to 10 hours explaining the rules of a game before we even finish one actual session, one scene in a game. That's just me. Maybe some of you disagree. Let me know your thoughts on this. Well, you know, what's the difference between a new school and old school? Which do you prefer, old school gamers or the new school gamers? Is, is there really a big difference? Does anything really matter? I don't know. Let me know. I like to hear your opinions. That's all on you guys. So, yeah. Uh, and again, don't forget to check out Eli's channel, Elfbait. He's got a Facebook page. I'll put the link in the description as well as a link to the YouTube channel for Elfbait. Pretty easy to see. He comments on my stuff all the time. I comment on his. Yeah, and one day we're gonna do a collaborative. We're gonna figure it out. I gotta get some better lighting and everything like that. Probably a better camera. But yeah, we'll get it figured out. So yeah, have a good one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And you know, this little video series, RPG Talk, don't know what I'm gonna do the title. I'll figure it out once I post this on, ooh, excuse me, on Facebook. And it's going to be infrequent, but, you know, maybe once or twice a month. But I want to hear what you guys think. Let me know. Talk to you later. Have a good one, guys. Later.